Okay. Um, all right. So uh, let's let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that this Sabbath day we've been able to uh, rest in you and um, learn more about you. And Lord, <clears throat> as we always know that you say that there's special blessings um, and when we observe your Sabbath. So on a spiritual sense, Father, we have no idea all the protection and blessings that you've been pouring upon us today as we've been united together and then um, just dwelling in you. So Father, for, uh, uh, for everything that you've been doing for us, especially within this day, we just thank you so much. And um, we hate to see it go, Father, but we're thankful that we can come together tonight and worship you and praise you one more time unitedly before beginning the new week. And so we ask, Father, that you'll please bless this time that we're together. Um, fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Guide us into your wisdom and understanding. And Lord, help us to grow stronger in you. We thank you, and, and Lord, we ask you to be with us. You promise when two or more are gathered in your name, you will be there. And uh, we, we thank you for being here with us. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Um, let me just share my screen here. Um, there's been something that Juan has been um, bringing up in conversation uh, um, a few times and and he brought it up again last night and it um it made me want to just kind of uh, look a little bit deeper into it myself um so i i i did <laughs> i went about um just kind of doing a little bit more research um and then when I was done, Juan was like, what have you been doing? Because he heard me typing on my phone for a long time. <laughs> and he, when I was done, he said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I've got a Vespers put together, I guess, for the next time I have to do Vespers. And I told him because I was looking up the uh, this based on this scripture verse, James 5, 16. Um, I just I looked some stuff up and God was just kind of leading in a short little Bible study. And uh, so I said, well, the next time I have to do Vespers, I have something now. But then I checked the calendar this morning and I forgot that tonight I'm supposed to do Vespers. <laughs> so um, I actually thought I looked at the wrong day when I made the bulletin and I put John and Marilyn on there, but <laughs> I was wrong about that. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, so praise God. Um, he already put something together and um, <clears throat> I just I just pray that our our hearts are open to it and our minds because um uh you know I I it's hard to say oh god put this together but then if it sounds confusing you know like I just I don't want to <laughs> cuz all I did was I just put it together I didn't like go through and proof it or anything but um but I'm just going to trust in god that he had a um a point to all of this that that other people can hear as well so um so in James 5, 16, um, the end of that, it says, uh, oh, oh, and the scriptures that I'll be using is from the New Living Translation, okay? Uh, but they're pretty cohesive with the King James Version. Um, I just kind of like the way that it's uh, worded a little bit uh, differently. Um, hold on one second. Okay, here we go. So James 5, 16, the end of it says, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. In the King James Version, it says the prayer of, uh, prayer of a righteous person availeth much, but I, I, I hope you can see why I like the New Living Translation and how it explains it a little bit more. So I'm going to read it again. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. But the question here is, um, who is righteous though? Because here in Romans uh, 3, 9 to 19, I've got it here if you can see it, but I'll be reading it for those of you if you, if you can't see the screen. It says here, well then, should we conclude that we Jews are better than others? No, not at all. 
For we have already shown that all people, whether Jews or Gentiles, are under the power of sin. As the scriptures say, no one is righteous, not even one. No one is truly wise. No one is seeking God. All have turned away. All have become useless. No one does good, not a single one. Their talk is foul like the stench from an open grave. Their tongues are filled with lies. Snake venom drips from their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. They rush to commit murder. Destruction and misery always follow them. They don't know where to find peace. They have no fear of God at all. Obviously, the law applies to those to whom it was given, for its purpose is to keep people from having excuses and to show that the entire world is guilty before God. Um, this scripture verse, when I've read it before, you know, I've never applied it to Christians, you know, just people that are truly devoting and giving their life to God. Um, because from the appearance of what it's explaining, it's talking about people that have turned away from God. But it says that the entire world is guilty before God. And we know that if we don't have Christ, um, then we carry the guilt of our sins. Um, but in addition to that, we know that none of us here are perfect yet. And we know that we have Christ to cover us. But we do have to be careful how we live, how we continue to live in the sins that we haven't let, let go of yet. Because by us not letting go of the things we, we are still holding on to, it's a deeper sense of saying we still don't trust God to an extent that he can help us to overcome those things. So we have to be careful if we're not willing to let go of things. And in any sense, what God is saying here is that no one is righteous the entire world is guilty and jesus says in isaiah 64 6 we are all infected and impure with sin when we display our righteous deeds they are nothing but filthy rags like autumn leaves we wither and fall and our sins sweep us away like the wind <coughs> So, so then if a righteous, if the prayers of a righteous person availeth much, then who is this righteous person that Christ is speaking about? In here, I have Genesis 15, 6, and I have Romans 4, 1 to 3, and 20 to 25. Let's first look at what it means for a person to be righteous. It says, and Abraham believed the Lord, and the Lord counted, it, counted him as righteous because of his faith. And Abraham, oh, Abraham was, humanly speaking, the founder of our Jewish nation. What did he discover about being made right with God? If his good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he would have had something to boast about. But that was not God's way. For the scriptures tell us Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger and in this he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. And when God counted him as righteous, it wasn't just for Abraham's benefit. It was recorded for our benefit too, assuring us that God will also count us as righteous if we believe in him, the one who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. He was handed over to die because of our sins, and he was raised to life to make us right with God. So Paul says that Abraham believed and it was credited to him as righteousness. But if our faith and, and to be righteous, what, count, what makes us righteous is our faith in God. But if our faith is as filthy rags, as um, Isaiah 64, 6 just said, then how can we have faith that will be counted to us 
as righteousness. Paul says in Galatians 2.20, Paul says, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And in the King James Version, it says, in the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. And that in the King James Version, I actually like how they say that a little bit better because it's the faith of Jesus that we are given. Um, even the even our faith, the faith that we have is not ours, but it is from the faith that Christ lives with. He gives us his faith. And Romans 5, 5 says that um, God gives us his Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love, not ours, but his. It says here, and this hope will not lead to disappointment for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. So God gives us his faith and his love. He gives us the ability to even believe in him because without the faith of Christ in us, we wouldn't even be able to believe in God. So it's not our righteousness, it's not our faith, it's Christ's. Because Christ is the only one who is worthy, the only one who is righteous. I'm going to read some scripture verses here. Um, 1 Corinthians 1.30 says, God has united you with Christ Jesus. For our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. He made us pure and holy, and he freed us from sin. Romans 1.17 says, This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. And then Jeremiah 23.5 says, For the time is coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous descendant from King David's line, he will be a king who rules with wisdom. He will do what is just and right throughout the land. So all these scriptures and more show that Jesus was the only one who was worthy, was the only one who was righteous enough to die for our sins. And it is his righteousness that covers us. For our own covering is not righteous, but it is as filthy rags. Um, so when scripture says that the prayer of a righteous person has much power, is it our righteousness that availeth much? No, not at all. <laughs> um, the righteousness we have is the righteousness of Jesus. And when we pray and believe that God hears our prayers, oh, wait a minute. Um, and when we pray and believe that God hears our prayers and will do as we ask, is it our faith that causes God to answer our prayers? No. <laughs> we, this is what we have to understand. It's the faith we receive from Jesus. It's the faith we receive from Jesus. And when we pray, is it our prayers that God hears and answers? Actually, no. Not if we are praying in Christ. I, I encourage you to read all of Hebrews 7, but 
one of the main points that I pulled out from Hebrews 7 was Hebrews 7 25 and it says therefore he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him he lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. Hebrews 7 talks about Jesus as our high priest. And we know that in the sanctuary, the high priest went in to offer the prayers before God. He was the one responsible for carrying those prayers to the Lord. He was the only one that could come um, before the most holy place to offer those prayers. And that is what that was um, a shadow of a foreshadow of what Jesus was and is always doing for us. So Christ prays for us. So this means that our prayers are taken by Christ and lifted up to God. So the prayers that are actually provided to us by Christ, you know, we know that God's Holy Spirit impresses upon our hearts what we need to pray for if and as long as we are in Christ. So the prayers of a righteous person, us only being righteous through Christ, uh, through Christ's righteousness avails much. And we can know that this is because it is by Christ and through Christ for the sake of Christ. And God will do anything that his son asks. John 17, 7 to 11 says, Now they know that everything I have is a gift from you, for I have passed on to them the message you gave me. They accepted it and know that I came from you, and they believe you sent me. My prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. All who are mine belong to you, and you have given them to me, so they bring me glory. Now I am departing from the world. They are staying in this world, but I am coming to you. Holy Father, you have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are. And also John 14, 13 to 14 says, you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the son can bring glory to the father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. So as long as we come to Christ, believe in Christ, depend on Christ, trust in Christ, then his faith makes us believe and his faith makes us righteous. And his righteousness through our prayers, prompted by the Holy Spirit, will be heard and answered Simply put, anyone who believes in Jesus will have much power in their prayer life. We don't need to look for a righteous person to pray with. We just need to abide in Christ and our prayers will be answered. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. This is the promise, the amazing promise that when we are praying to God and asking him for something that aligns with his will, then God sees the righteous robes of Christ, not our filthy rags. And he hears the righteous prayer of his son, not the the sinful, uh, corrupted words that we might use to try to express what we're asking for. It's all through Christ, and that's all that we need. It's a wonderful promise that if we just keep Christ in our heart, no matter where we are in our walk with life, no matter what sin we have committed, we just we have to confess our sin to God. And he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us 
from all unrighteousness. And then when God looks at us, he sees Christ and he hears those prayers. When we think of our prayers being lifted up to our Heavenly Father in that way, how much more confident are you that God will hear your prayer, is hearing your prayer, and is answering your prayer? That's a wonderful promise. And so what I, what I pray for um, as we go about this week is that we just remember in our prayer life to God for our family and our friends, all the people that we love, um, everyone that we're worried about, everyone we care about, the problems in the world that are a burden on our heart, everything that we bear to God, he hears us. And because we're coming to him with earnest and sincere hearts and we're coming to him, in the faith and by the faith of Christ. We can just be assured that our prayers are, are, are being answered and we can walk away from that prayer, wiping any tears from our eyes, um, turning any sadness into joy and rejoicing. We need to, because if we walk away from our prayers still filled with the burden, then we're not trusting in this promise that God has given us in this scripture. So before we go into prayer, <laughs> does anyone have um, any praises or prayer requests? Well, I have a praise that um, me and a, and a neighbor have gotten closer, um, but it's kind of bittersweet because it's as a result of the fact that a neighbor who she was much closer to than I is unable to speak to either one of us because she's in a rehab center right now and is unable to even pick up her phone. So me and this other person have just been leaning on each other more and So I'm very praiseworthy for that. That's good. And you know, we know that. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. No, that's okay. It's just bittersweet. But I mean, mm -hmm. at least, um, at least I'm getting together with Angelina more. We're talking more than we used to. Um, it's actually, that would be a blessing, Deirdre, because you know, God knows what's going on in the lives and hearts of both of those individuals. And um, mm -hmm. and as long as your prayers are for the both of them, then we can just be rest assured that he's, he's uh, working in their lives. And we can just see it as a blessing right now for, for this um, Angelina, that she has the Absolutely. opportunity to, to spend some time with someone who knows God's truth and can, uh, uh, teacher of the true character of God, you know? Oh, boy, but she's taught me a lot. Believe me, she's oh. every bit a Christian. Well, that's she's not an Adventist, but she's definitely a believer. Well, that's great, so. then. That means that uh, the two of you can come together and pray for this other woman, yep. then, you know? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Amen. Yep, so we've been doing I know Rachel is asking how Michelle is feeling. Um, a blessing today is that we did all get to see Michelle at church. Um, but Michelle, how are you feeling? I'm having a lot of pins and needles and hurting my hands, but uh, my joints. But it's getting better. And, you know, I have moments, but I'm trying to get through the day. I keep dropping stuff and, you know. <laughs> Things that I want to hold on to, I can't always hold on to, but it's better than it was. Okay. Is this as a result of a virus or something that? Yeah, I I, I got shingles um about oh. a week ago. Wow, bless your heart. But when I was younger, I got it twice, so it didn't surprise me that I got it. Yeah, I chicken pox too. 
Yeah, Michelle, it was really, really great seeing you. Um, I was afraid to go back to church too soon because I didn't want to be around Israela's kids because it's harder for someone. You can transmit it to children, but I, but it's less likely than if I was a child that had chicken pox to give it to a child. So I got concerned with the little, little one because, you know, I got diagnosed the night that I um, went to church. So that scared me. <laughs> yeah, I can see. Well, so far she seems okay, so. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, the, doc the doctor that said- That sounds that great. That's the transmittable. Yeah. Hi, Michelle. I'm sorry, I've been out of touch. And I know last week I had told your mom that I was going to send some information and I, and I just had terrible Wi-Fi, and it's just been a little, off this Saturday, but definitely I'll leave my number with me because I, I don't see your name up here. So I could leave it with Mary and she can pass it on to you. <laughs> I don't see where, where your name is here in the chat. Um, yeah, if you want to just, um, uh, you can pass it over to me. Um, here it is. I see it. I oh, see here? it now. Okay. okay. I don't know yeah, if Michelle, you. Michelle, are you able to get if uh, if Rachel sends you a private chat on here, will you be able to pop it up? Um, in any case, Rachel, if Michelle doesn't end up getting it, um, I know that Ashley has your contact info. Oh, and we're connected on WhatsApp, so you can always send me your. Um, yes, your, we are. Yeah, you, you I can think always you have send my me. number. I'll text you and just. Go ahead and text her my number. Okay. Um, I think you have me on your phone. I know I have you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think so. I think so. Yeah. All right. Anyone else have any praises or prayer requests? Well, my big praise was that Michelle was able to attend church today. Yeah. So I was happy to see her there. Of course, she was in the car with me going to church, so... <laughs> <laughs> and we stopped and got little Marion. So, uh, yes, I was happy that Michelle felt well enough to go today. Yeah, I think it's a blessing, too, that Marion's been able to um, to come every week. Yeah. I want to also um, keep Francie in prayer, just that um, Francie uh, is feeling better soon. <laughs> oh, I hope so. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I am also coming down with something. Um, so I'm taking in, I'm taking in a lot of vitamin C, Sue. <laughs> um, but uh, prayers, please, just for that. I've got a busy week ahead at work uh, leading up to preschool graduation. So <laughs> just want to be healthy for that. And then my body can crash if it needs to. <laughs> um, anyone else? Continued prayers for my son, Dennis. Mm -hmm. He will be down here shortly. Oh, good. Continued so. prayers for our children and grandchildren, families. Yes. I, I, I don't know if he's doing better or not, but I know this week a deer hit his truck. Oh, really? How did he handle that? Well, I'm not sure. I haven't talked to him. His mother said he's got her car <laughs> and she's not happy about it. So I don't know how he's handling it. I, I suppose know. he's not real happy. Okay. Yeah. We're just, we'll, we'll keep Mackenzie in, in our prayers. And, and we know that God is, um, we know that God is working hard on him. Um, and true that Satan might be trying to work work harder to um you know to keep him pulled away or whatever, but God is so much more powerful than that. So we know that God will be glorified in the end of all this. Just want God to draw these beautiful people in our families to Him. Mm -hmm. And um. I want to lift up um, our former neighbor, Harriet, um, who's in uh, 
uh, assisted living facility, just that God will just help her in her, I don't want to say end time of her life, but it kind of is, and her dementia is growing worse. So <clears throat> her name is Harriet, if you can keep her in prayer. Um, I also have the list that we generally keep um, on uh, Wednesday nights and um, and when I when I'm doing Vespers. So I'm going to be uh, uh, lifting up the people that we have um, here on this list as well. And um, does anyone have um, a praise that we can I thank God? Praise God that um, remember when I was telling you about Travis who had lost his dog and how depressed and upset he was well he got himself a kitten so <laughs> it has really raised his spirits and you know he's definitely he took a little time off but now he's back to work and everything's about this kitten so <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know yeah. um, it, it's made a difference because at first he was trying to figure out if he should get another dog or if he should get a different type of animal but um, I think the kitten was a good idea because that way, you know, he wasn't remembering his dog so much. But uh, it's definitely put light in the house. Awesome. <laughs> God makes such awesome creatures. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and um and bow our heads for prayer we're going to lift up these people that that um you know that we're we care about so much and and we'll um close the sabbath um all right let's bow our heads heavenly father we thank you so much for your amazing promises the promises that we can just um rest assured in we're thankful for it, Father, that you've proven in each of our lives over and over again, one way and another, that we can trust you. And even when things seem dark, even when things seem like maybe they're going the wrong way or that maybe we've made the wrong decision on something and now we're, uh, we've uh, kind of caused our path to go off course, we know it doesn't matter, Father, those things shouldn't, we shouldn't worry about because we know all good things um, happen for those that love you, Lord. And um, we trust, Lord, that as long as we're with you, we know that we are safe no matter what we have to go through. And we're thankful, Father, because you, you also tell us that the trials in our life are what strengthen us in you. And we're, we appreciate it, Father, because um, we wouldn't want our lives, each of our individual lives, to be any other way that would cause us to not know you as, as much as we do and to not love you as much as we do. We know that any other way in our life could be leading us away from you rather than towards you. And, and so we're just thankful, Father, that you discipline us gently you guide us gently and um, and that you always have our best interest at heart. And uh, so Father, whatever we have to go through, we praise you and we glorify you for it. And Lord, um, there's so many people we care about, so many people we love. And whether these people know you um, or don't know you, we want you to continue working in their lives to help them, to guide them, um, just even to help them get through this life knowing that, uh, knowing your promises, the way that you've uh, taught us your promises. We're coming together in, in, in agreement together, Father, that we want these people to, to be in your kingdom. We want these people to be able to even live life here um, uh, trusting in you and you alone through the, the good and the bad that they have to go through. You bring us such peace and you bring us such assurance, Father, and we can't have this from you without wanting those that we love to experience it too. So while we lift up these people, Lord, and all the people that are in our hearts that we carry silently in prayer, 
We ask, Father, that you will work mighty miracles in their lives, that you will bring them to salvation through Christ, to acceptance in Christ. We lift up Raphael and Kelly. We lift up Michelle. We lift up Pauline, Carol, Renee, Scott, Mackenzie, Susan, Milagros, Clyde and his family, Alan, Dennis. We lift up Nancy and Hector as they move, uh, work to, to move to Georgia, that you'll show them where you want them to live. We lift up the relationship that Deirdre is um, gaining with her neighbor. We lift up Francie and Dennis and Harriet. We lift up our families, our friends, our children, and our grandchildren. Lord, these are the people that you've brought into our path. These are the people that you've put in our hearts to love. And because we here together love each other, we all care about the loved ones that each other is, is holding in their heart as well. And so, Father, by the blood of Jesus that was shed for all of us to be able to be reconciled to you, we ask you, Father, that you will please work in the lives of all of these people. Heal them. Give them hope bring them peace and give them the assurance and confidence that you are guiding them and protecting them in the most powerful way and help them to feel your love that surpasses all understanding. And Father, as we go about this week and as we close this Sabbath, we ask, Father, that you will guard us, protect us, put a light before us in our path that we'll always be walking towards you, Father, and not wandering off. We pray, Father, in advance that everything that will happen in our lives this upcoming week will all be to glorify you and you alone, and that... <clears throat> and that they will be learning experiences for us, for you to draw us closer to you and, and, and uh, tie us closer to you. Um, but also just as, and, and most importantly, we pray that the experiences that will happen to us in this week to come will be for the benefit of others to be saved and come to know you. Glorify your name in this world, Father. We want to go home. We want to be with you once and for all. And, but we know that the work still has to be completed here, Father. So use our lives this week and always to glorify your name so that this world can know who you truly are. Thank you again for your wonderful Sabbath hours and all that you were working to do to accomplish things in our lives during these Sabbath hours, these holy hours. And just be in each of our households as we depart from each other tonight. Keep each one here safe and in your hands. And again, Father, be with those that we love to carry them to you. We ask all of this, Father, according to your good will to be done. We ask it in Jesus's name. And we thank you, Father, that we can believe that you will do mighty things in the lives of these people and in ours. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 Amen.